Okay, so the title of this paper is Asymmetries of the Lower Limb, the Calculation Conundrum in Strength Training and Conditioning. It's a little cheesy, I know. Um, first thing I'd like to do is say thank you to my fellow authors, um, Anthony Turner and Sham Chavda, who I work with at Middlesex University, and Paul Reed as well. Um, he actually doesn't work at St. Mary's University anymore. He works out in Qatar uh, at Aspatar Sports Medicine Hospital. Anthony and Paul are uh, both my PhD supervisors, um, and all three of the fellow, uh, all, all three of my co-authors, uh, did a really, really good job of, you know, ensuring that the content was what it needed to be to get it um, at the level to be accepted by the Strength and Conditioning Journal. So thanks to them. Okay, so a little bit of background um, in respect to uh, this article. Um, first and foremost, it, it kind of came about last summer whilst I was going through the lit review process for my PhD, which is on asymmetries. And I was you know, trolling through article after article uh, in respect to asymmetries. And, and, you know, whilst I was collating all my um, you know, my notes for all these different articles, I noticed that there were, uh, there was quite a lot of different variations in how asymmetries were being calculated. So it's probably easiest if I just scroll down to the table now, um, and that gives you the, the best representation of that. <clears throat> so the first thing to say is that if you look at the second column, there's quite, a, there's quite a few subtle discrepancies in how the mathematical equations are structured. Like if you take bilateral asymmetry index 2 and asymmetry index, they're actually the same except one wants you to times it by 2 at the beginning and another one wants you to divide it by 2 at the end. Um, similarly, if you look at the third column, the asymmetry score, the first equation is actually the same as the second and the fourth equation. It's just choosing to look at it from a from the opposite end of the spectrum, as in uh, the concept of symmetry rather than asymmetry. So knowing all that stuff, if we stick with that third column, the asymmetry score percentages, the highest value we've got is 22.2%, and the lowest value is 7.04%. We've also got four different potential uh, outcomes there, regardless of what data gets put into the equations. And that's a discrepancy of 15.16%, which is really, really large, you know, and it's a, it's quite a large sort of margin for error. And if we think about it practically, really, if you had three primary research studies, and one of them chose to uh, report asymmetries in a single leg counter movement jump, let's say, using the limb symmetry index three, one chose to use the symmetry index and one chose to use the symmetry angle. <clears throat> They've all quantified these interlimb differences via a unilateral jump, but maybe we get asymmetries being reported of 15%, 8%, and 5%. And that's because the way the mathematical equation is set up is that regardless of the data that goes into them, there'll always be a different outcome because the equation doesn't allow consistency. And I think that's a real problem. And that's the, that's the key point to draw upon from this, you know, is there's a, there's a major difference between the outcomes from a lot of these equations and there's no real consistency moving forward in which ones we should use. Now, I'm happy to tell you that at this stage of my PhD, um, I have proposed in this article one equation that we should consider moving forward with um, that might be uh, potentially the best option and it is somewhat anecdotal. However, other uh, studies by Sean Maloney and Scott Brown that I know of relatively recently have used this too. So it's definitely emerging as a you know, a, a popular method of quantifying asymmetries. And this one is uh, the last one that was in that table, the symmetry angle. The symmetry angle, there's a, a picture of it here in the diagram, which kind of almost looks sort of a, a little bit complex. But essentially, that thick diagonal black line, okay, is uh, kind of an indication of perfect symmetry, indicating 45 degrees. And then 
naturally the first figure you get in step one by going through that equation is the degrees and then to turn it into a percentage we just times it by a hundred and it then makes it comparable um, to uh, all the other equations that we have but the reason why we're suggesting that you know perhaps this equation might be the one to move forward with in respect to asymmetries is because it doesn't have a reference value and it's probably easier if I again go back up to the table to show you what I'm talking about with regards to a reference value. So it's probably best understood looking at equa equation four, the bilateral strength asymmetry. You can see that it says stronger limb minus weaker limb divided by stronger limb. The reference value there is the stronger limb because the equation starts with that and it's set up so that you divide that initial sum by the stronger limb, which makes the assumption that the stronger limb is the score to strive for. In many instances, that might be true, but also who's to say that the stronger limb is at the level it needs to be? Um, similarly, if an athlete were to get injured, then perhaps the stronger limb might become the weaker limb. And whilst I'm sure practitioners would always make note of that in their results and in their data sets, if hypothetically they did forget for any reason, then looking back at data over periods of one, two or three years, asymmetry scores might start to lose context because all you've done is classify the differences by strength, so to speak. So it is somewhat anecdotal at this stage, but the idea is to have an equation that you don't need to manipulate in any way, shape or form, regardless of whether or not uh, an athlete gets injured, whether or not the non-dominant limb scores higher than the dominant limb. Um, so the symmetry angle, that bottom one in that table, is, is more just an expression of the differences okay, between left and right sides um, and... Um, Sean Maloney and Scott Brown uh, are, are two recent authors who um, have used this equation uh, and suggested that it might be also, uh, you know, the best method of, of quantifying interlim differences moving forward. Uh, just to finish, I would say that I am proposing in my PhD to try and quantify whether there's a, a, a significant difference between some of these equations that you can see in this table. Uh, and by doing so, if I do find that there is a, a significant difference, let's say between the limb symmetry index three and the symmetry angle, that's hopefully my way of saying, actually, you know, we can't just use any old equation and pick one that we like uh, for the purpose of reporting uh, these differences because they're now not interchangeable anymore. The margin for error is, is too great to ignore. Uh, I think that about does it. Um, hope you've enjoyed and thanks very much for listening.